Hello again. I hope you're all doing well. Yes, welcome to another vlog. We're up in uh, Lowick again for a week's holiday. End of March. And as you probably see behind me, the good weather in March is now breaking. So let's hope you manage to get out and do quite a bit of cycling in the nice sunny weather. Well, I'm out for a 100k ride today and I'm hoping to stay on my inner roads and miss most of the traffic. You'll have seen the title of the vlog. If you look at a map of the area, maybe you'll be able to work out where I'm going. Just look in the borders area because we're going over into Scotland. Oh, uh, beautiful scenery ahead and a nice little climb as well. As you can see, the uh, sunny skies have changed to light cloud and the temperature has dropped something drastic. Yesterday we were in about 17s and 18s, currently it's about 6 or 7. But luckily the wind is still quite light, maybe 8 to 10 kilometres an hour. We'll soon be coming to the village of Norham, which lies approximately 11 kilometres southwest of Berwick upon Tweed. It lies to the south of the River Tweed, which forms the border between England and Scotland. This is the 12th century Norham Castle. It's now ruined, which sits upon the top of a grassy mound and guarded a vital ford crossing across the river. It was one of the most important strongholds in this region and was besieged by the Scots on numerous occasions. Robert Bruce actually besieged this castle for a whole year. This is the village of Norham and just outside the village we'll be going over Norham Bridge which crosses the River Tweed. We've crossed this bridge before in a vlog entitled Don't Go On The A68. I'll put a link to that in the corner. I'm about uh, 20 kilometres into the ride now. Cycle through rush hour and uh, so far I've only uh, been passed by nine cars. We're arriving in the village of Allenton, the home to one of the most notorious border clans who were at the forefront of the border feuds. Lid Cottage here marked the entrance to the drive that ran up to the clan's house. However, in the First World War, the clan's house was requisitioned by the government as barracks for soldiers. Those soldiers vandalised the house by using the wood from staircases, doors, etc. for heating. And after the war, the government refused to pay reparations and the house was allowed to go into ruin, was it? finally demolished in 1925. Houses here in the north of the village form part of the clan's estate. Allington lies above the confluence of two rivers. The White Adder Water, which comes in from the right, and the Black Adder Water, which comes in from the left. Once they join, it's the white adder water that continues to run down to the North Sea. I hope you guessed from the clue in the title that we were going to meet up with black adder somewhere. The name adder, in terms of the river, comes from the old English word adur, which means running water or stream. We're standing on the white adder bridge currently, and we're going to now go and Across the Black Adder Bridge. Here we are on the Black Adder Bridge and I suppose it's now time to let you in on my cunning plan and that is to ride up the Black Adder Water Valley until I get to a place called Greenlaw 
which is about as far as I can go up without going onto private roads. Why it's called the Black Adder and the other the White, I can only assume it's because in this river there seems to be a lot of iron in the water that comes down from the hills, given it its distinct darker colour. But just like Baldrick's cunning plan, mine has a flaw as well. There is no road that runs right up the valley at the side of the river. Oh yes, I think I can see where the problem with this plan is. Straight around the corner from the bridge and off we go, up the hills. And this is a view of the, one of the wooded areas in the borders that got hit by Storm Arwen. We could have done without losing all those trees to Storm Arwen, but uh, I'm sure they'll be replanted. We're dropping now and just about to cross the bridge over the Blackadder water. And yes, I've got to climb that one up ahead. We're on the ridge to the south of the Blackadder water now. A number of the dwellings around Arlington have the word Blackadder in the title. For example, Blackadder Farm or Blackadder Cottage. And this indicates that they form part of the Blackadder estate. Crossing the Blackadder water for the third time. And now we're running along the ridge to the north of Blackadder water, having climbed another blooming hill. Oh, I can see where my cunning plan went awry. Nice quiet roads here. Not much traffic at all. The Blackadder water has meandered its way up the valley and this is the first time it's come close to the road that I'm riding along the ridge. It won't be long until it meanders off again. Crossing the Blackadder water now for the fourth time and into I climb up the other side of the valley and the fifth crossing off the water finally we get to see the Blackadder water running along just the side of the road but only for a few hundred meters as we enter Greenlaw. The village of Greenlaw was first made county town of Berwickshire in 1596 but it was located approximately one mile south of the current village at the top of the hill over there in what is now known as Old Greenlaw and which we will pass sometime later in the ride. The role of county town of Berwickshire alternated between Greenlaw and Duns for the next 300 years. Here in Greenlaw there's a church with a bit of history. The church was uh, originally built in 1675 and was expanded to its present form in the 18th century. By 1712 the church tower, square in form as you can see, had to be developed into a toll booth or prison and to the west, not there now, had been built a courthouse which was also completed in 1712. So we had a church, a prison and a courthouse all in a row. We gave rise to the saying, here stands the gospel, the law, with hell's hole between the two. And now for our final crossing of the Blackadder water, which has looked round the south side of the village. And now we turn left as well. Turning right at the crossroads would have taken us further along the river, but it turns into a private road. This is the site of Old Greenlaw. Demolished now, and the only thing that uh, represents the village is the farm behind me that bears the same name, Old Greenlaw. We're just about to enter the village of Eccles. 
and apparently its name was derived from the Welsh for church, which is Igwis. You'll see that a number of the villages in Scotland have a 20 mile per hour speed limit. The Church of Scotland Parish Church was rebuilt in 1774 and is said to contain several medieval stones. The bell tower holds a bell dating from 1659 and the earliest Presbyterian minister recorded is Robert French who was at Echoes between 1567 and 1574. This is the wood to the north of the Hursel and you can see Storm Arwen hit here hard as well. Coldstream is the location where Edward I of England invaded Scotland in 1296. The town lies to the north of the current English Scotland border which runs down the centre of the River Tweed below. In 1650 General Monk founded the Coldstream Guards which were based in the town. The regiment still exists today and is commemorated by a museum in the lower and quieter part of town. Alexander Douglas Hume was Prime Minister of the UK between October 1963 and October 1964. His ancestral home, the Hursel, is located at the west end of the town. I've already made a short uh, vlog of a stroll round the grounds of the Hursel. I'll put a link in the corner. I've just ridden past Floddenfield Monument as I'm making my way into Braxton. I've done a vlog that uh, gives you a potted history of Flodden Field. I'll put a link in the corner. Look at those dancing horses on the gate posts into Ford Castle. A couple of beautiful young belted Galloway calves. Well, it's mid afternoon now and the weather's totally changing. I hope you can see this in the GoPro. The wind has changed to a northeasterly and it's blowing a sea mist on shore. You can just see the bases of the wind turbines. Their blades are up in the mist. Thank you for coming along with me today. And I hope you enjoyed seeing some new places. I've only got about four kilometers to go to get back to the cottage up here. And it looks like the mist is gonna close in as I go along. So I'll say goodbye here. I'll leave you with the two 10% climbs up through Ford. Until we meet again, enjoy your cycling, stay safe, bye for now. <laughs>